In this module, we'll take a look at cybersecurity maturity matrix layer one, which is the foundational layer. And let's take a look at what the controls are in this first beginning layer of the cybersecurity maturity matrix. So this is a view of the entire cybersecurity maturity matrix. And as you can see, there are six different levels and we will talk about the foundation or the first layer. And as mentioned, this is a sequential, proactive and structured model so that we can categorize, measure and implement security in a organized and consistent manner. So this is the cybersecurity maturity matrix layer one foundation. It has four controls working from the bottom up to the uh, top. First of all, license windows or open source, then license enterprise antivirus for workstations and for uh, servers, active directory for workstations and servers, and edge firewall with filtering. So let's take a look at the first control. Licensed windows or open source. Now, this is really the beginning of the security journey. First of all, open source is now very widely used across the world. And the other alternative is to buy uh, licensed Windows, which on workstations is mostly um, Microsoft. Microsoft Windows 7, 8, and the latest one being used is Windows 10. And uh, other than that, on servers, there's a huge number of operating systems. There's, there's more operating systems. You can have Windows, like Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows uh, 2016, and the older one is Windows uh, Server 2008, and then Linux, and then you know uh, IBM AIX and other operating systems as well. So the open source is not very widely used in the country, although it's free, and organizations are paying a huge amount for licensing costs of the operating systems. So the open source versions of the operating systems are much more secure because they are open and a lot of eyes get to look at them and there's nothing hidden and those are being reviewed and improved all the time. So licensed Windows, uh, which is um, from Microsoft, uh, for example, is, is widely used across the world, but it can be replaced very easily with Ubuntu open source, uh, works for the workstation version. Um, and um, it, it works very nicely. Uh, you know, all the functions, word processing, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, all have their um, open source versions and browsing and etc. all can be done uh, without spending any money on licensing. And there are other numerous open source alternatives as well, especially on the server side and the basic requirement um, for a secure IT setup. So this is where the security journey starts and pirated software is infested with malware. That's really the, the main problem. So the first control is to either go with open source on workstations and on the server, and there are lots of flavors available, and you can go and learn about this and search about this and learn about this and try it out and get experienced at it, and it's free of cost. It'll help your organization. Or then if that is not going to happen in your organization due to any reason, then you can go ahead and buy the licensed Microsoft uh, licenses. Um, there's only two options, open source, or licensed Windows OS, and um, pirated has to be avoided. The second control is licensed anti uh, enterprise antivirus. Now, the uh, in especially in small organizations, they're using malware bytes or they're using uh, you know AVG uh, security, and that uh, works fine in most cases. Um, they, you know, they have free versions and you can install and download them on your computer and it'll give you updates and antivirus protection. Um, and some of them work quite well. But uh, at, on an enterprise level, we uh, need a dashboard which tells us how, um, uh, what the status is of the anti antivirus on each workstation and each system, be it the server side or the workstation side. And that has to be run as a program so that the antivirus is updated. Uh, first of all, we need visibility, and then we need to update the antivirus and push out the antivirus uh, updates to the workstations and to the servers. If we leave it to the users, um, then it's likely that in an environment that has 500, 1,000, or 10,000 computers, and there are 10,000 instances of antivirus that need to be run there, they're all going to be out of sync because many users will delay the updates. So. Uh, users usually do not update their antivirus. A visibility dashboard and central management is required in an enterprise. We need consistent management of hundreds or thousands of antivirus agents. 
um, and many antivirus agents are out of sync with the update server. Usually, if you go out into the enterprise and take a look, 5 to 10% of the agents may be out of sync. So you need a licensed enterprise antivirus, which gives you a dashboard and gives you the management control of all of those uh, in separate instances. 1.3, Active Directory. Now, if you're using Microsoft licensed OS, the Active Directory is going to be very essential, and the open source version of this is Puppet, and you can use this on, for example, on Linux to do the same type of administration uh, that we use through Active Directory. Active Directory is essential not only to regulate account management, which is authentication and authorization, but also to enforce and push out management, um, you know, manage the security controls. So when there's a large enterprise um, and you have a Windows licensed operating system, you need Active Directory to manage uh, the security controls and the account management, which is very essential. And then 1.4, an edge firewall with filtering. So this is really the start of the perimeter security. This is where the perimeter security starts. You don't need, um, at, at the first layer, the foundation layer of cybersecurity maturity matrix, we're not really asking for a very expensive or a full-featured next-generation firewall, but you just need something at the edge to filter, block traffic, allow traffic, and uh, to create some logs so that we can have some control at the perimeter um, and we can uh, implement all of the functions which an edge firewall is supposed to implement. For example, this forms the first line of perimeter defense. There's filtering of incoming and outgoing traffic. There should be a DMZ uh, for hosted services like your email server or your web server and policy enforcement for security. Uh, we can do that at a basic level uh, over here. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.